guys, we've just touched down in Melbourne. We are here for the Melbourne International Coffee Expo. And before we get stuck into that, I've just dropped in to see Mirko. He's here at Social Fixation. How are you, Mirko? Very good, thanks for coming. Yeah, excited to be here for the expo, but I thought I'd just come and pick your brains about social media, particularly around cafes and how cafes can really use them to your advantage. But before I do, how's the Melbourne coffee scene at the moment? Uh, frantic, hectic, exciting, Yeah, usual. It's a crazy no, time, like it's coffee week, it's mice, it's a good time. Yeah, we have a few clients who have a lot of requests for mice, so yeah, yeah. it's it's crazy time. Yeah, great. And give us a rundown of, I guess, your business, how, a little bit of background too of you, you personally, it's always interesting to know, I guess, your experience in coffee, but also what you run now. You've got a few different brands in your business, so. Yeah, so I suppose my background comes from strong hospitality and sort of coffee background. And then I moved into a digital space and started this agency and we take care of food and beverages, brands, social media. Great. You got social fixation, you've got coffee fixation. What else you got? Travel, food and minimal. And those are our passion projects, as someone would call yeah. them, and sort of like it, where we all started and our playground, and we love creating and curating pages and allowing other creators to have a voice, and then yeah. for us to see where those can take us. Coffee Fixation will have a project of its own, and social has already an entity, so yeah. Cool. That's if us. someone's going to find you, we'll put some links below, but what's the biggest platform for you? Oh, uh, Instagram is the OG, I would say, for all of them, across of them. But for the agency, Pinterest has been our top performing platforms. But that's just like, I don't know, social media is a little bit like Melbourne's weather, you know. For some people, you know, it keeps changing. It's sure. four seasons in one day. All right, well, let's, let's get stuck into that. Because I guess, like our audience is cafe owners. They're looking at opening a cafe or they've been running one for a while. Um, even if you're a home person and you want to learn about coffee, mm -hmm. there's all these different ways and, and or even finding new cafes. I think it works hand in hand. You're like, you go to a town, you want to find a cafe, what platforms are you using? And therefore kind of what platforms should cafes be using? Ideally to grow their business, attract attention. Um, what platforms are you finding most relevant in cafes and coffee right now? Instagram, TikTok are definitely up there yeah and i think to touch base on what you said uh, just for people listening i think the consumer behavior has changed in terms of how people are shopping so it's no longer about high foot traffic necessarily it's about finding you online before i make a choice to come to your venue sure that's why i think it's important even for a cafe or a restaurant to sort of have that social media presence and people yeah still look up on Instagram where to go for brunch, where to go for coffee, yeah. and where to go for a particular experience. But those two are the dominant platforms. Sure. Uh, Instagram, like are you finding reels or posts or anything particularly, like TikTok obviously being its own platform, but any any particular one of those things, I guess, like because everyone's a bit overwhelmed by whether they're supposed to be doing, having a beautiful landing page. If they were gonna do one thing. Uh, short form of videos, are definitely the way to go. Um, there's no secret. I think it's been said yeah. over and over. I think now our focus when we work with certain clients is about finding a hero item. So uh, given the economic situation, uh, we're noticing that more and more people that want to be involved and go to the places that are cool and they've sure. been seen on the internet. But instead of, you know, the conversation has shifted and Monday on Mondays in the office from have you been to to have you tried this so yeah. examples could be the Mont Blanc at Good Measures or uh, the latest craze which is a tiramisu ice latte having that one item that is affordable for everyone and also Instagramable and TikTokable sure. and it can be a talk of town so I think that Crafting that, why should I come to you? Yeah, is very important. Yeah, that's cool. Having a, I mean, that, that draw card, essentially. Um, 
is that how often do they really need to be communicating? Like, I guess in all of the noise of social media, what's a, what's a, probably a good starting point if someone to really get that attention? Yeah, you, you, you come once a week. We're good. <laughs> I was about to say people are going to hate on on the answer. I mean, the more the better. But uh, as a starting point, I would say every two days, um, sure. at least on the feed. Um, but if you have a tactical and a structure element of how you record a video and the same video you spread it across different platforms and you're yeah. posting more than just once for that day, yeah. so you can be a little bit tactical and thoughtful yeah. around that. Uh, it's just about communication. So it's like you don't want to be the annoying auntie on the family group chat who messages every hour about a new test and to find yeah. out which Harry Potter character you are out of yeah. a Facebook test. But it's about communicating in, a, in the right way with your tone of voice. And yeah, every second day, ideally. Cool, which means, I guess, lower the expectations on the quality and the imagery and, and be okay with posting kind of just what's happening that day. Like how, I guess at what level have you noticed uh, having an impact of that high production photography versus in the moment stuff? Depending, I mean, maybe it gets the, the feed versus stories. I think I define them as, we split them in two atoms. I think the beautiful imagery and all your graphic elements, uh, your branding, building elements. So you're, you're building the foundation of your brand. Sure. So then visually you're recognized, uh, whether it's your color codes and typo and the beautiful imagery that you decide which style you're going. But then it's the fun, relatable, engaging, interesting, valuable content that people want to see. Sure. And there's a whole bunch of creators who just post kitchen hacks. Yeah. And you, you'll be surprised, people would find it interesting and knowing what a day looks like for someone who owns a coffee shop and what that entails. And you can just literally record yourself yeah. all day, little clips, and at yeah. the end, you just put in a voiceover. Or if you're shy with the voice, you can always have that registered robot voice sure. and you can picture a story. Yeah, cool. Uh, if you open a cafe tomorrow and how would, you how would you let people know? Like, is there any tactics? Have you seen things work on online that you think is a, is a great way to kind of get your message out there to more people or to across the different areas? Where, what, what would you do? First, you got to bank up uh, all the behind the scenes, the building, the crying, the process, yeah. just because you might find yourself a year later, six months later, looking for that footage to do it before and after or to tell how far you've come or to describe your story and tell your story. I think giving a face to the brand is always a good starting point because that's where the story starts and tell the audience who you are, why you're opening and what you are about. So otherwise it's just another coffee shop, which is okay but it's just about why would I come to see you and what, you know, give me a reason. So tactically, probably I would say uh, jump on TikTok and Instagram and do some nice short format videos about you. Um, you can go a little bit crazy and sort of come up with a fun campaign and introducing yourself. I mean, maybe yeah. you can have a little uh, campaign to do every single day. You're giving away your you know, a large coffee to the first person who comes in or, you know, you go out of the shop and you give it to all your local neighbors, yeah. you know, your post office and, you yeah. know, the, the bakery and people will just sort of like then start following that as a series and that will wonder who are they going to give a free coffee the next day. Yeah, so okay. if you can build a series, you will build and cultivate an audience and they will expect that content. Yeah, cool. And it's low effort. You make yeah. a coffee. Film yourself giving it to Jimmy, the sure. local business, yeah. small business owner. Yeah. yeah. From experience, I've noticed that people will want to hold back until opening day and getting the socials. I mean, personally, I've always kind of said, tell that story through the whole build and let the opening day actually be, have some momentum. I think that's 
the vision of having this op massive opening day without a lead up um, is underwhelming for people if they haven't actually done the work, the groundwork to get them, get some attention. So that's, that's for me, I've always kind of encouraged people to take photos of the build, um, share that story. People love that. It doesn't have to be necessarily on the feed. It can just be stories, but yeah, I think it's valuable for people to be a little bit honest. Uh, yeah, and coffee is about that community. Mm. So if you're in a particular space, I think putting your hand up and say, hey, we're about to open, I think you'll get some nice support because mm. people want to support your local coffee shop, generally yeah. speaking. Yes. Yeah. Um, what do you say to people that tell you they don't have time for socials? Uh, you'd be surprised how much a you know, like someone who's still at uni would love to come in once or twice a week to batch create and produce sure. 12, 18 TikToks, keep them all into drafts and then drip feeding them one or two a day yeah. throughout the week. So much rather that than flipping burgers at Burger King, sure. as to say. Uh, I would say that as an internal. Uh, alternatively, you can just use very low effort content ideas like time lapse, uh, text over clips that you have in your B-roll and you're just telling a story or updates. Yeah. And then a day in a life and you're literally just recording three, four, five, six seconds at a time and then you just put it all together. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Is there any kind of apps or tools that you kind of recommend? Like you might use them in your business, but I think just scheduling apps and stuff, people don't realize that yes, you can kind of schedule outside of hours because it is hard to get the photo of the coffee during service. Scheduling software is for sure. Uh, you got Buffer, Hootsuite, Later, and most of them have a free plan, or you can use the studio that Facebook allows, studio creator from Facebook, Meta. Yeah. They also allow you to schedule both on Facebook and Instagram. So that's probably your ABC. Um, if you're starting to get familiar with some artificial intelligence, it probably wouldn't hurt. So at least chat GPT, uh, it's a good place to, to go to as far as a little tool in the, in the toolbox. Um, I don't know, little tripod and just your phone. Yeah, yeah. There's there's so many different ways of producing content. You don't always have to be in front of a camera. We we get used to it eventually, but this might not be the best way for people. And I, and I wouldn't expect anyone to just if if you're a good barista or you bake cakes, I wouldn't expect you to really want to be in front of a camera. But there's heaps of good ways that you can still talk, about, especially if you can produce something that's beautiful. Mm. and you can get a good photo of it, tell us how you made it, we're not going to be able to remake it. Like, I think the, f the fear of giving up, we give away everything and we hope that people learn from it, but we never expect someone to be able to truly replicate everything that we do just because we tell them everything and just be honest. So um, that's definitely part of the conversations that people like. They're worried that they're giving away their secrets. Uh, I don't know. It's interesting, like, because the same people who are worried people that might be consuming those secrets, that might be consuming the content, mm. but they're not really stealing all of it to their advantage to destroy the creator. Mm. Uh, but I think a good story for a cafe could be, I need to get back to you on the username, but there was this girl on YouTube and during COVID and lockdown, she was just filming on YouTube the entire shift. You know what we're doing tomorrow morning? We're going around Melbourne with a... No, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, So there'll there be a go. video soon. She doesn't work in the cafe anymore because I tried to see if we could do a video together of us working the That bar. was unscripted. So we've done, <laughs> yeah. So we've done a video before of me working in our espresso bar for the half an hour and it kills because people just love to watch the process, workflow. It's not, you know, there's nothing cut. There's no cuts in the whole thing. Um, and her, her video was, I guess, in, we were inspired to do the video. Hers is two and a half million views right now. It's just her making coffee in her cafe. And so, yeah, we're literally hooking up in the morning. She's going to show us around a few cafes. So she blogs and still does blogs and puts out content. So keep an eye out for the next video. Um, we'll put links in below. Um, but, yeah, she does great. Uh, yeah, and that goes to the point of not having time. I mean, people want to be comfortable talking to, to, to camera or to the phone and 
all of a sudden you're doing what you're doing every single day and you sort of set your phone, forget it's even mm -hmm. there. If you want to get fancy, you've got a little remote uh, yeah. microphone, but it's, those videos were killing. People just love watching what a shift looked like. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that's where it's like, you look at slime videos or ASMR soaps and all the trending stuff. It's yeah. like people watch random things and that's okay because as humans, we're curious. So don't be afraid if there's anything particular inside your cafe, behind the cafe, about your story. People just love watching the interesting things. For sure. Do you feel like there's ever a point where it's too much? Well, if it crosses the illegality line. <laughs> sure. I think, I think people are afraid that if they post every day, everyone's going to see their con every, content they every won't. day. They just won't see it. They won't because the platforms, the way they distribute and allocate the content, who you, I wish. That would yeah, be no, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, if you post three times a day, uh, very unlikely people will see all three. Yeah. Very unlikely they're going to see it the next day. So it's, it's all good. The other thing is like you're in the business, you know what to look for. What's, what's a quick thing that someone could be on Instagram and like, is it insights? What are they looking at that, that, that you're kind of like, is a good measure that you're either doing a good job or, or you're getting some attention like, or proving results, I guess, because you've got to justify the spend of the time or the, the cost of the person. I probably would say the answer, it's not necessarily on a metric level, but it's more on observing how people are engaging with your content. So if you see that people keep coming back and engaging and commenting and liking and watching, eventually you work out very quickly what's working or not working. Sure. Um, for me, like a good example could be if you start a series and it's all about, uh, I don't know, like you have a latte art challenge every Thursday, say yeah. between your staff members and you see that that series really picking up momentum, then you're sticking with that series or the other flip side, you just keep changing and watching yeah. how people react to the content. That's why multiple platform posting is essential because you will gauge feedback from different audiences and different eyeballs. Yeah. Um, but overall, because I know uh, a lot of cafe owners want to hear a number, I think ask people at the table why and how they heard of your business. Totally. There's no way that you can picture, but you yeah. will be surprised about the amount of people who tell you, I saw you on TikTok, yeah. I saw your food on Instagram, we decided to come here. They might still not have followed you because they already follow 1,700 sure. other accounts, yeah. but their decision making must have, you know, sometimes it's made through socials or Google or finding you on the streets. Sure. And I think like when you, you've got that buyer's journey or someone that, you know, they heard about you, they saw you on TikTok. Some people don't use Instagram and they only use TikTok or Facebook. And so not going, you know, picking one you know, platform is limiting mm -mm. on the audience. But I think everyone's got different ways to see content. Um, and they, yeah, if, especially if you've got a unique product that people then start coming to and ask, asking for it. I think we've noticed that we know when we talk about coffee products or something, you know, you'll get more interest on that product because it's relevant. So, um, all right, so we've done a lighting shift because in your beautiful space here, we were getting engulfed in sunshine. So I've just got one more question for it's, you. I want to know, I guess, what is the point where a cafe would feel like it's time to take the pressure off themselves and, and engage with someone like yourself or get an agency or really outsource that help. Um, what do those conversations look like to you from your experience? I think the first conversation is how much you value social media. I sure. think if you were already not really feeling it, uh, it's probably a conversation you don't want to have. Yeah. Uh, the minute you do value the aspects around marketing and digital uh, space, uh, I would say is how much time are you dedicating that you could be dedicating on to uh, doing sales and find catering gigs or sure. uh, promoting other aspects of your business or training or whatever sides of the business that you are you know, not giving the right amount of attention because yeah. you're spending it creating content. So I would say when you're starting running very low on time and when you maybe have like no clue, you don't want to learn, you don't want to deal with it, 
and you do appreciate that you need probably someone to come in and hold your hand and put together a strategy, do the content and yep. run it for you. And you might turn around and say, I'll stick with them for the rest of my life, or you might take over after six months. It's up to, uh, you know, to each their own. Sure. And you've seen, obviously, over your time, some great results. You've, you know, seen some people really shine through in socials. We had some fun elements and fun campaigns and some campaigns that went viral and others that didn't. Uh, but it's just like good to see a brand like rejuvenate and rebrand without rebranding just through a beautiful amount of pictures and images yeah. and reels and TikToks and them feeling proud about their work. Like for me, that's one of our best things that we do is like people feel happy and proud of their baby because it's their business, it's their bakery, yeah. it's a cafe in this case, or it's a restaurant and they feel proud and they show it to people. And then result based and seeing people tagging and trying the dishes that we are promoting and pushing yeah. out. And yeah, overall helping someone uh, to put their business uh, out there, it's, yeah, it's, it's rewarding for us. Great. We're doing a great job. Uh, we'll put some links in the just in the description below so you can check you out on all the social channels that you look after mate enjoy the week <laughs> thanks for having me thank you for coming enjoy man. coffee with melbourne you. coffee week and and mice and i'm sure we'll catch up again soon if you have any questions put them in the comments below i'll i'll monitor them i'll come back to you and hit you up I'll for reply. all the answers but yeah uh if you like the video hit the like button and the Where subscribe is it? Is button it? Is it? Is it somewhere here? Is it here? <laughs> and the bell Thanks for your time. We'll catch you next time. Cheers. Bye.